Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Med Zohra. Today we are going to talk about pneumocystis. This is the continuation of parasitology video series. Let's get started. Pneumocystis. Is it a parasitic protozoan or a fungus? There's a big debate about that. I'll talk about this a bit later. But for now, we can call it a protozoan and a fungus too. Is it responsible for causing pneumonia in immunocompromised patients? Pneumocystis gerovecchiae was discovered in 2002. And this is a human species because uh, it is responsible for causing infections in human beings. Another species of pneumocystis is pneumocystis carini, that is a red species. Fungus versus protozoan. Whether this pneumocystis gerovecchiae is a fungus or a protozoan. Many aspects of biochemistry indicate that it is a yeast, but it also has several attributes of protozoan. An analysis of ribosomal RNA sequences indicates that pneumocystis should be classified as fungus related to yeast as Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Subsequent analysis of mitochondrial DNA and of various enzymes supports the idea that it is a fungus. However, it does not have ergosterol in its membrane as do the fungi. It has cholesterol. In tissues, it appears as a cyst that resembles the cysts of protozoa. The findings that it does not grow on fungal media and that antifungal drugs are ineffective have delayed acceptance of its classification as a fungus. Important properties. Classification and life cycle of pneumocystis are unclear. Pneumocystis species has a special surface glycoprotein that exhibits significant antigenic variation. Pneumocystis species has several genes for encoding this surface protein. One gene is expressed at a time. Habitat. Each mammalian species has its own species of pneumocystis. As we've discussed in the first slide, that for humans, it is pneumocystis gerovecchiae, and for rats, as it is also a mammal, the species is pneumocystis carini. Transmission occurs via inhalation. Pathogenesis. Infection occurs predominantly in lungs. The presence of cysts in the alveoli induces an inflammatory response consisting primarily of plasma cells resulting in frothy exudate that blocks oxygen exchange. Let me take you to the inflammatory response. As the cysts are present in lungs, these will induce that inflammatory response. During that inflammatory response, many cytokines, the inflammatory mediators, the interleukins, and tumor necrotic factor alpha will be released. They will get into the bloodstream. They will cause increased vascular permeability. When there will be increased vascular permeability, fluid will leak out of the capillaries, the capillaries that surround the alveoli. When this fluid will be leaked out, this fluid will start compressing the alveoli. When the alveoli will be collapsed, it will be hard for the oxygen to get into the alveoli and the oxygen carbon dioxide exchange uh, in the blood through the alveoli, through these capillary from alveoli will become really hard. So it blocks oxygen exchange. Come back to the topic. The presence of plasma cells has led to the name plasma cell pneumonia. The organism does not invade the lung tissue. Pneumonia occurs when host defenses, for example, the number of CD4 positive, the helper T cells are reduced. It means that the patient is immunocompromised because the number of these cells is reduced. This accounts for the prominence of pneumocystis pneumonia in patients with AIDS and in premature or debilitated infants. Epidemiology. Pneumocystis gerovochiae is distributed worldwide. It is estimated that 70% people have been infected. Most five years old children in US have antibodies to this organism. Asymptomatic infection is therefore quite common. 
Prior to the advent of immunosuppressive therapy, pneumocystis pneumonia was rarely seen in U.S. Hospital outbreaks do not occur and patients of pneumocystis are not isolated. Its incidence has paralleled the increase in immunosuppression and rise in number of AIDS cases. Mortality rate of pneumocystis pneumonia approaches 100%. Clinical findings. Fever, that has a sudden onset. Non-productive cough. Dyspnea, tachypnea, bilateral rails and ronchi are heard. More gradual onset in infants. Lab diagnosis will require specimen like lung tissue, fluids, and sputum. Microscopy. Wet mount microscopy suitable. PCR based tests are done. No serologic test is done. And this organism has not been grown in culture. Treatment. Treatment of choice is the combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole, that is Bactrim or Saptra, Pentamidine and Etovacuon are alternative drugs. Prevention. Combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole, aerosolized Pentamidine. Above two are used as chemoprophylaxis in patients whose CD4 counts are below 200. And that's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to leave your suggestions and feedback in the comments below. Till next time, Allah Hafiz.